Hey friends, Paul here with a very special art video today showcasing one of my favorite illustrators. Recently discovered him, Henry Bugby Kane, who lived from 1902 to 1971. Kane was trained at MIT as an illumination engineer, a lighting engineer, and he later worked at MIT in the, as the alumni director. And he worked at MIT uh, from the mid thirties, retiring in 1966. And there he befriended a guy named John J. Rowlands, who authored Cash Lake Country in 1947. Rowlands was in the news service of the um, Massachusetts Institute of Technology. And together, these two guys made trips to Northern Ontario, where in the uh, early part of the 1900s, uh, specific, most importantly, in 1911, Rowlands actually lived with a Cree Indian in Northern Ontario, learning the ways of the natives up there as he was uh, commissioned in a mining operation and later, and later doing some military gear testing in the area. So very interesting history of these two men who collaborated on this book, Cash Lake Country, published in 1947. And that's what I'm going to be showing first. Now, I just read this book, and this is an amazing, wonderful book written by John J. Rowlands, but I'm going to be focusing on the artwork of Henry Bugby Kane, and these are pen and ink drawings, it appears to me. I, I don't think they're woodcut, but I've uh, bookmarked several pages here. I'm going to go through and just show you the beautiful... Look at the nuances there in the months. Just the lettering is just very cool. See that snowy owl descending in the upper right there. One thing I love about this artist, Henry Kane, looking through his work, is that he's always got neat little things going on in his drawings. Look at the little peeper frogs with their throats all bellowed out. And his illustrations follow the book, follow Rowland's uh commentary um, about living in northern Ontario. Um, actually, his friend Henry Kane is figured in the book as Henry or Hank in the book. It's kind of fictionalized. Rowlands fictionalizes um, his buddy Hank and himself as long as as well as this Indian chief Tibish. Look at this plate here of the uh, lady slippers. Isn't that just wonderful? Oh man, that's one of my favorite images from this book. I can't find an image of Rowlands on the internet, but this would seem to be the two guys in the book, Hank and the author. Got a tree frog. Look at the backgrounds, the beautiful uh, ink work there. You know, the, the lines in his work and the, just this kind of style is very reminiscent of Rockwell Kent. This is Rockwell Kent from Moby Dick, the great whale. I mean, check out the water and stuff. Now compare this to an image from the book, Icebound Summer in, from 1951. This is Henry Bugby Kane's drawing of a whale or ink painting of a whale. Another great image from Moby Dick, Rockwell Kent. I just wanted to point this out because 1930 is when Kent did those illustrations. And of course, Henry Bugby Kane, as well as anyone in the illustration world, would have been well aware of Rockwell Kent's work at the time. So back to Cash Lake Country. I, I just love the contrast. Look at the water, the reflections in the water, and just the amazing contrast. It is very similar to... Um, Rockwell Kent, obviously a style of all of his own. Look at the beaver. Um, 
cruising through the water there, through the still water. Look at the stillness of the water. Again, the motifs, the, the attention to detail I love with cane. Look at the sharpened stick that the beaver is carrying because that's exactly how beavers chew through wood. Another one of my favorite images from the book. Check out the field mouse, the white-footed mouse bounding away. Look at the beautiful birch tree here. But check out the uh, weasel or pine marten coming around the tree. Oftentimes when I look at Kane's work, I see like the um, animated figure. Like at first, I just noticed the mouse. But if you look carefully, there's this predator coming around the corner. And it's just such a complete narrative. You know, he was trained as an engineer, an illumination lighting design engineer. Yet look at the um, skill that he exhibited with his artwork. And um, he was very prolific, you know, illustrating uh, many books. So that's Cash Lake Country. And I highly recommend you read it because it's a fascinating read. It's very beautifully written by John J. Rallins, again, who was a journalist um, at MIT in the news service. And the two of those guys were friends. So it, it makes the book that much more special. Moving forward to Thoreau's The Maine Woods, uh, originally published in 1864, but the edition with illustrations by Henry Bugby Kane is from 1950. So uh, three years after Cache Lake Country. And this is how I first became aware of Kane's work was by reading uh, this Thoreau's The Maine Woods um, last winter, but I immediately was just blown away by the beautiful clouds. And look at the line backgrounds again, so reminiscent of Rockwell Kent, but look at that beautiful, big, bold, cumulus cloud. And of course that attention to detail, look at the partridge or roughed grouse in the road in, in winged flight, as well as walking and the beautiful, uh, trees and vegetation around the scene. Here's one of my favorite images in the book. Um, I believe this is a showy orcas plant. Um, look at the bumblebee and the beautiful uh, flower. And look at the daddy long leg spider. There's Kane at work again, always showing that little extra nuance in the drawing to just add that much more life and animation. Oh man, just, it gives me goosebumps looking at this work. Um, look at the birds. Look at the cedar leaf. Here we have an osprey with again, Kane's trademark billowing clouds in the background. Please feast, let your eyes feast on this great horned owl, Henry Bugby Kane. Thoreau's The Maine Woods. Is that a formidable creature or what? Look at the talons. Man, I tell you what, that is worth the price of the book to me just about. And it's amazing that there's so much more in here to explore. Look at this one. Look at the contrast. Peaceful, serene, um, yet serious kind of scene here of the natives in the canoe and the birch bark canoe, nonetheless, with the uh, reflections in the still water, just like the beaver. So those are a couple great books to just enjoy the artwork of Henry Bugby Kane. Kane also used graphite pencil as a medium for his illustrations here shown in Thoreau's The River. And you can see the wonderful variations in tone. What do you guys think about this video? Have you enjoyed this cruise through Kane's work? Please post your comments below and thanks for watching.